Hello and welcome to episode 155 of the Graceful Tangle podcast. I am so excited to be back filming. Um, as I mentioned in the last episode, in episode 154, um, I, it's been a couple months since I last filmed. Um, and in that time I have moved, I have started a new job, but it's like so much more than that. I don't even want to just call it a job, but um, anyway, it's just entered a completely new season of life. And in the midst of all of that, podcasting went a little bit to the wayside. I, um, in this season, I'm actually living with an amazing host family, but because of that, you know, I'm in a house that is not my own. And so there's just like some things that you kind of have to play by ear, um, regarding all of that. But all of that to say, I am back. I don't exactly know what this schedule is going to look like in terms of filming in the future. I think it's always going to be a little bit sporadic. Um, I'm in a different season of life and that's okay. Um, but it means that like YouTube and stuff like that just isn't the number one priority anymore. Um, which to be kind of frank was always my hope that I would one day start something new. Um, but I would always like have this to do on like the back end and the background of whatever, you know, job, passion, whatever um, it was going to be. So anyways, all of that to say, super excited to be back. Um, funny story, I thought I was recording for like at least 10 minutes and was not. So I have a little bit of practice just talking to nobody again. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> cannot believe that happened. But anyways, here we are. It's going to feel like I'm repeating, repeating myself, but um not to you guys anyways so because it's been so long since the last episode i have so much that i could share but instead of honestly just taking the time to like figure every little thing out um, i'm just going to show you some things that i just recently finished and my main two projects that i'm working on right now um and then hopefully we'll get into a better rhythm of filming and so it'll be a little bit more current and frequent which would be amazing but anyways so excited to be back so excited to be filming. I'm so excited to share all of the projects with you guys. I have missed it. It's crazy how like almost natural it feels to be talking to a camera. It's like such a weird thing, um, honestly, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's been as long as it has. But anyways, let's go ahead and hop into it um, with a finished object. I actually knit a pair of socks over the last couple of weeks. Um, mainly because my dear friend Julie of Twin Stitches Designs has written a book, um, a sock pattern book. So there are 24 sock patterns in here, ranging from fingering to DK to roasted. There's um, color work, there's knit and pearl stitch patterns, there's just some plain stockinette sock patterns. There's patterns that feature scrappy um, or like scraps of yarn, small amounts of yarn. Um, anyway, it's just so fun. This book is launching later this month, so stay tuned for it. Um, I am so stinking proud of her, and I feel I, I was messaging back and forth with her on Instagram a couple weeks ago. Um, and I was like, I feel like it's weird to say that you're proud of somebody who's, you know, like older than you and a different season of life than you are. But I am. It's just so amazing to see people anywhere, truly, but in this community, um, just like for this example, doing amazing things, hard things that are difficult for anybody, no matter how old they are. Writing a book is hard. I can't imagine all of the work that went into this, but it's beautiful. Um, it's so easy to follow along. It's colorful and exciting. And like I said, 24 stock patterns is a lot. And there's so many that I want to make. Um, but anyways, she sent me a copy to kind of share with you guys to help promote it and get the word out a little bit, which is so fun. I'm so thankful for that. Um, but in the midst of all of it, I decided to make a pair. So I made a pair of DK socks. Um, these use some really old Sorella yarn that I had. I knit the Felix sweater for her um, a couple of years ago now um, as a sample. And I had this yarn left over and it's just been sitting on my shelf, which speaking of, I am aware that it is not exactly super neat right now and I apologize for that but it was either take time to fix that and make it super neat or film didn't really have time to do both so here we are um anyways all of that to say I used that leftover yarn finally to make this pair of socks um I don't remember the exact pattern that I used um I'm gonna figure that out <laughs> I think it was this one, but I'm going to figure it out for sure and make like a separate Instagram post um, about these socks 
in just a few days. But um, I believe I used the Double the Fun socks, which is, a, like I said, a DK white sock pattern. It features a um, cuff down construction and then a German short row heel, um, both of which I absolutely love. So it was so nice to have these to work on like after a long day. I didn't even have to worry about it um, or think about it, just like sit down and do it, um, which was amazing. So super excited to have those done. It was so fun to make them. Um, and I literally have my eyes on so many sock patterns from this book. So I will definitely be making some more. Um, and like I said, stay tuned for that book because it's beautiful and so, so exciting for Julie. Um, okay, I'm currently working on two main projects right now and both of which are actually garments. So the first is this sweater. I have literally tried and failed so many times to make a sweater with this yarn. <laughs> And it's completely ridiculous. It's like no fault of the yarn. It just like hasn't worked out. I have an image in my mind for the sweater, knit sweater, that I want to have. I want to make it. I want to be able to wear it. I want it to be like cozy and oversized, but not oversized to the point where it looks, you know, just like way too big. Um, I want it to have a loose enough gauge to where it's not like tight and um, stuck in a like specific position, but also so that it's not see-through um anyway i want to be able to wear it to work like all of these things and i feel like i might have finally gotten it um here's what it currently looks like um it's showing like super striped on the camera it's really not that pronounced in terms of stripes in person i will be getting some better pictures obviously when it's done outside in natural completely natural light and that's going to help but um i am actually making i forget what it's called I don't know, men's raglan sweater, maybe uh, men's crew neck. I'm not sure. It is technically a man's pattern. Um, it's designed by, I don't wanna say her name wrong, Callie, I think. Um, I will link the pattern below because that's gonna be the easiest method. But um, anyway, so I, it's technically a men's pattern, but I'm changing it just a little bit. I didn't do as many short rows as the pattern called for for the neck. I also didn't do as many increases. Um, I'm just kind of making it my own. Honestly, I'm using this pattern as like a basis, but I'm like not even following it right now. I used it for like the beginning stitch counts, but even that I changed it a little bit. I really just needed like a basic, this is actually the foot, uh -huh. um, I just needed like a basic raglan sweater that was actually a crew neck because I wanted it to be close to my neck. And so many, if they have the raglan shaping or more of like a boat neck or a wider neck, and I just don't love that look, at least not on me personally, um, so yeah, I'm hoping this gets the job done. I'm actually really close to finishing the body, which is super exciting. I'm hoping to have this completely finished by the next time that I film. Um, and if it works out, I want to make so many more just like it. Honestly, I have like some yarn in my stash that I want to use for this specific purpose. So I'm really, really hoping that, um, it works out, but I'm using Mary Maxim Marvelous Chunky Yarn. This is going to be a Koei Oh, chocolate mint. I was expecting just a number, but it's called chocolate mint. It's like browns. Not gonna lie, this yarn reminds me a little bit of carpet, so I'm trying not to think about that <laughs> in terms of like a sweater that I'm gonna put on my body, but I think it's totally fine. I think with like a pair of jeans, it's gonna look cute. It's gonna be fine. Um, and yeah, very excited about it. I'm really, really hoping that it works out like I want it to. I'll keep you updated. I'm also, this is like a size five bulky white yarn, but I'm using size 11 needles and it's like perfect the gauge is exactly what i want um so yeah i'm just really really hoping that it works out exactly how i want it to and then the last thing that i'm working on right now um is actually for somebody else for my friend my best friend ellie um wanted this uh garment for herself so i am making it currently in a little bit of a holding pattern because i want to make certain that i am doing everything correctly um, I also thought I had the pattern in here and I don't, which is super frustrating, but this is a, once again, I'll link the pattern below because I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> just like so bad off the top of my head. Um, but it's basically a bottom up knit tank. And so right now, like I did the folded hem and now I am just like knitting all the way up until I get to the underarms and then I will split. Um, and it's just like a really simple sleeveless, um, knit tank. I'm using Knit Picks Kotlin yarn for this which is a DK weight yarn. This is the colorway linen and it's 70% cotton at 30% linen. So really lovely blend. She actually lives in Texas. So this is going to be perfect. 
um, for that climate. I'm just hoping that it all works out and that I have enough yarn. I should, but you know, you get in that little mindset of worrying that you don't and yeah, we'll see. I'm going to do some measuring later and just make sure that I'm on the right track. But um, anyways, very exciting. It's going great. It's taken me longer than it should have to really get this thing going. But now it's just in the stockinette section. So it's just easy to go to town and not, um, not worry about it too much. All right. So those are all of the projects that I am currently working on, like I said, I mean, there's so many that I've done over the past couple months, but I'm not going to take the time to like figure all of that out right now. It would just take too much time, honestly. Um, and that's okay. So I hope you enjoyed seeing all of those. I am super pumped about all of them and just finishing them. Like I said, I'm hoping to get into a little bit better of a rhythm in terms of podcasting. And so hopefully I'll be able to keep up a little bit better moving forward in just terms of like the frequency of projects that I share but um anyways I wanted to hop into a little devotional segment um this is just such a treasured part of the podcast something that's so so important to me um and just increasingly more important um so I am doing a really crazy bible plan this year where I am basically reading 10 different chapters of well one chapter each from 10 different books of the bible um, every day as well as reading my chronological bible again and it's been amazing it takes some time um but i love it so much i have such a deep deep passion for the word for the bible um it's really important to me especially in just like a new season of life in particular of just holding everything um up to the word itself um, because this is what I believe. This is my foundation. And so it's really important to me that everything that I am believing, everything that I'm, um, doing lines up with it. And I am flawed and so, so imperfect. And so I will literally screw up every single day. But at the same time, um, it's a continual process, right? Of just being obedient to it. So anyways, I'm just taking the lie in it. Like it's not supposed to be, um, you know, it's not supposed to be this, this burden. Um... Okay, so I'm currently reading First Thessalonians right now and have been so encouraged by it. And so I thought I would just um, kind of take a second to talk about it um, for just a couple of minutes with you guys. And so I wanted to find um, a specific section. I'll just like to talk about this. So uh, First Thessalonians, it's obviously Paul and um, not obviously, if you didn't know, um, it's Paul and Timothy writing to the Thessalonians, um, to a church, uh, I believe Thessalonica, I think is the right word. Um, anyways, really, actually, I could probably find that out for sure because this Bible is awesome and has an introduction to each chapter. Yes, I was right. Thessalonica um, was the capital and major part of a Roman province in Macedonia with a population of about 200,000 Loyal to Caesar, the city of Thessalonica was filled with pagan worshippers of idols, the full pantheon of Greek and Roman gods, as and was well known for its emperor worship. So, um, it's really just Paul and Timothy trying to um, encourage the Thessalonians to follow God alone, that he is our God, he is the only one that we should be worshiping um, and honoring and seeking to glorify in all that we do. And the way, one of the ways that we do that is to encourage one each other and build each other up um, in the faith. So that's kind of like the underlying message of first and second Thessalonians. Um, but specifically chapter two really stood out to me. And so I thought I would just share a couple of um, pieces uh, from it. So 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 11 says, as you know, like a father with his own children, we encouraged, comforted, and implored each one of you to walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. This is why we constantly thank God because when you receive the word of God that you heard from us, you welcome it, welcomed, welcomed it not as human message, but as it truly is the word of God, which works effectively in you who believe. Um, I love so much in both first and 
magnificent. Well, first and second Thessalonians, but the underlying message of just encouraging one another is something that matters so, so deeply to me. Words matter. Words have the power um, to hurt and heal. They have the power to bring life or to bring death. Um, and I mean, that's, that's a proverb. The power of life and death is in our tongue. And so while our actions matter, my, the way that we um, conduct ourselves matters, so do our words. Um, and that's not to be forgotten. And so I love that Paul is just really speaking life um, over these people that are struggling in their faith, that um, while it's so important to take the word as truth and to heed it and to obey it and to delight in it, um, is how God reveals himself among us is through his, his word. Um, it's also important to encourage each other in the same way. And I think that looks different. Sometimes in some cases it might actually be sharing the gospel with them, um, with that person, whoever it is, with a friend, with a coworker, with, um, you know, a group of people in a small group, whatever the case may be. Um, it may look like reading scripture together, but sometimes it might also be um, just through your words and how you talk to each other. Um, I know sometimes, you know, we're talking to people who might not be um, Christians themselves, but we can still point them to Jesus by our words and the way that we treat them and our actions. Um, I believe it's in... I think Galatians, um, I don't remember the exact chapter off the top of my head right now, but it's talking about the fruits of the spirit. Um, and those who seek to please the flesh will reap destru destru destruction. Wow. Um, but those who seek to please um, him, res please him result in eternal life. And so that's what I want to embody. I want my life to be evident of, of Christ. Um, so I want to portraying his love and his joy and his peace and his patience, all of these traits that come with abiding in him. Um, and that's like a really big message of um, first and second Thessalonians as well. So I just encourage you to encourage one another, whether that actually be sharing Bible verses with them and encouraging them with the actual word um, or just, hey, I like your jeans or I like your shirt or your hair looks cute today or how can I pray for you? Or what is something that you're struggling with? Like there's so many ways that we can just encourage one each other and build each other up. And in a world that is broken and hurting, um, that's our job as Christians to, to shine his light. Um, so anyways, that's just like one of the many things that I'm reading right now, but something that really stood out to me and something that I really, really want to work on just embodying and portraying his graciousness and compassion anywhere. And, um, everywhere I go. So I hope it was encouraging to you as well. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I am so excited to just be back. We'll see how frequent these episodes are um, in a very busy and wild season of life. But I am so thankful for each of you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are working on some super exciting projects. I would love to hear about them in the comments below if you want to share. I'm also still posting on um, Instagram and launching patterns, so I'll link those platforms below, but be sure that you're following me over on there. It's definitely more frequent than YouTube <laughs> in this season. Um, but like I said, thank you so, so much for watching. Um, I hope you have a great week. I hope that you work on so many fun projects, um, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.